All right, great. So uh, welcome everyone. Today is June 6th and we're going to be talking today on uh, Google Sheets. Uh, Google Sheets is very much like Microsoft Excel. For anyone who's ever used Microsoft Excel, you can use it uh, to add up and do math. You can use it to create charts and graphs. Uh, most organizations use it uh, maybe to maintain a contact list, a budget, you can do all kinds of fun stuff with Google Sheets. Uh, and the best part is it is free if you have a Google account already. So if you have a Google account, you have a Gmail account, you also have Google Sheets. And so we're going to look at that today. What that looks like, we're going to do uh, an introduction to Google Sheets today. So we'll go through some of the basic tools. We'll talk about how the information is stored and um, how it's organized into a sheet. And then we'll do some basic calculations. Uh, and I think you guys are going to like it. It's going to be a good class. And this is a foundational class uh, to anyone looking to go into maybe working in corporate America or in business, in any type of business. You will use spreadsheets, 100% guaranteed. Uh, now, yes, in business, you may use Microsoft Excel which we're going to cover uh, later on this year. Uh, but for now, I wanted to do an introduction to Google Sheets because this is a very useful uh, program. And if you understand Google Sheets, you will adapt to Google Excel. Or, I'm sorry, Microsoft Excel very easily. Uh, it'll be an easy transition over to Microsoft Excel, which is just a more powerful version of Google Sheets. So with that, I'll go ahead and share my screen and we'll go ahead and get going. All right. So... You guys should now see my screen. You should see that I am working in my Gmail account here. Yes. And I'm going to go ahead and log into Gmail. You guys all know how to go to Gmail. You can go to google.com or just gmail.com. Uh, and you can see I'm logged in here. I've got my uh, compose over here. It says Gmail. I know that I'm logged in because I see over here on the far right uh, my name. And it says my Google account. And for some of you, it'll have your initials here. For me, because I've uploaded a photo, it uh, has my photo there. So that's how you know that you're logged into your Google account. So just like we did when we worked on Google Docs, right here, just next to my name where it says that I'm logged in, there are nine white dots. When you click those nine dots, that is the Google Apps. So that is going to open up and show you all the things that are available to you through your free Google account. So we have things like uh, Google Play Store, YouTube, which is owned by Google, Google Maps, which I'm sure some of you use on your phones. You have Gmail, Google Meet, which is like a FaceTime or Zoom, Google Drive, Google Chat, Google Calendar, Google Translate. There's just so many, many, many tools. Uh, we already did uh, some classes on Google Docs. so. Today, we're going to start by looking at Google Sheets. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this one. Notice that it opens up a new tab up here. So these first two tabs are my email, and now I have a new tab for Google Sheets. I'll zoom in just a little bit so you guys see a little better. Uh, so when you get to Google Sheets, just a little orientation again, it still should have your face over here, and you still have the nine dots. So these are always going to be there so that you can go over to other programs within your Google account. So you can always click that if you want to open up Google you know, Docs or if you want to open up Google Slides, which is like PowerPoint, you can always do that from here. Starting right here at the top, you see this is an area where you can start a new spreadsheet. And so you can click here to create a new blank sheet. Uh, here are some of the things that you can do in Google Sheets. You can create a to-do list, you have budgets, uh, a financial investment calculator, a calendar. If you click here, template gallery, it'll expand and show you some additional resources. Let's say you wanted to create a uh, like a wedding planning checklist, you could use this as a default. So for most things that you're going to be doing in Google Sheets, you don't need to start from the beginning with a blank sheet. Normally, you can come here and find a template from what, what you might be looking to do. Make a budget, make a to-do list, uh, a shift schedule at work. Uh, there's all kinds of fun stuff in here, as you can see. Uh, you know, a grade book, assignment tracker, attendance tracker, all kinds of fun stuff in here. And then I'm going to go back. And then under there, it says, uh, you know, old documents or documents that you've saved. 
And then you can see here, I have multiple documents that I have under my spreadsheets. And so for today though, I'm gonna go ahead and just do a blank spreadsheet and we're gonna work on creating a budget for the barbecue. So you can see that I just did this on Tuesday. I'm actually gonna go ahead and delete this one. And I'm gonna make a new one today. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on blank spreadsheet. And let's just look around at what we have. So what we have here is we have all these columns here at the top. So columns are labeled with A through Z for the alphabet, right? So A, column B, column C, column D, E, and it goes all the way over to Z, okay? And then going down, you have rows, row one, row two, row three, okay? These are multiple rows here. If I wanted to select multiple columns, I can just click A and move over and release, and that'll select all of those columns. So. Information in spreadsheets is always going to be organized in columns, which go up and down, right, this way, and then rows, which is this way. And so I'll go ahead and start our table by giving it a label. We're going to call it barbecue shopping list, because if you've ever worked with an organization and planned a large meal or a large gathering, the first thing you do is always figure out how many people are coming. And then once you figure out how many people are coming, uh, from there, you plan on how much food to purchase, right? And so let's say that you were in an organization, you guys were putting together a uh, Memorial Day barbecue, and you guys said, hey, like our budget's going to be a thousand bucks to put on this event. Um, write the list down of things that you want to get. Let me know what that budget is going to purchase. And if you guys think that that's going to be enough. Okay, I see Alice is getting uh, connected with Pastor Zippy. Fantastic. Um, okay, Pastor Zippy, you see the phone number there in the chat? Okay. All right, so, uh, yeah. And so right here, so we have barbecue shopping list. And this is where I'm going to need some participation from you all to help me out. Um, let's look around. And so notice right here, I just made this column wider. Because see here, column A is this wide, but barbecue shopping list is wider than the column. So I'm just going to open that up just a little bit. And I do that by putting my mouse right in between the A and the B. Notice that my mouse changes its shape, and it looks like two vertical straight lines. So again, I go from having my pointer when I move up Right in between A and B, I can click and hold. The line turns kind of a, a heavier gray. And then I can pull this out all the way to the right to make sure I have enough space for my writing. And then I can release that, and it makes that entire column uh, a little bit wider what? so that everything now fits. Okay. So that's the first thing we want to do is have our title there. Uh, the next thing we want to do is we want to give our some column headers to what we're going to do. So for our shopping list, we need a column for what is the item that we want to buy. And then we need a column for quantity. And then we need a column for uh, cost per unit. And then we need a column for uh, total item cost. So we're doing this a little bit different than we did on Tuesday, just adding a little bit more detail. So let's go through this list. So if you're planning a barbecue, what do we need to buy, guys? Somebody help me out. Meat. Meat. Let's let's just say burger meat. We'll just keep it simple. Um, how many packs of Costco burgers do we need? We're having let's say let's say we're having fifty people. I'm gonna say we five might five. need five packs of burgers. Let's say the cost per unit is $25. Um, and now I'm going to come back to this column here. Uh, I'll come back to this in a second. So we're going to let the uh, spreadsheet do the math for this column because the math to get total unit cost would be, right, five packs of burgers times $25 each, right, which would get a total cost for the item. But we're going to come back because we're going to write a formula here that's going to calculate five times 25 automatically. 
So we got that. Uh, for burgers, uh, we've got that. So we need some cheese. Well, let's probably say five packs of cheese and cheese is, let's say, 10 each. Uh, what else? We need paper plates. Probably just need two packs of those. Those are 20 each. Um, let's say soft drinks. Maybe, barbecue uh, stand. Yeah, barbecue. Who said barbecue sauce? Yeah. Yeah, and uh, the stand itself, the like the what you used to prepare it, the barbecue stand itself. Oh, right, 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 right. Mm -hmm. um, so that there's no barbecue. Right, that would be bad. <laughs> uh, so let's say, yeah, sure, we can throw that in there. We'll just throw in like a, a barbecue grill. Okay, one. Soft drinks. Uh, soft drink would be uh, a pack of 24. So we need, uh, again, notice here, pack of 24 went too wide. So I'm going to make this column a little bit wider again to make sure it fits. So to do that, just come up here to the top, click and hold, move out to the right. And now soft drinks looks nice and good. So for soft drinks, let's say, oh, let's just go with 10. Why not? Uh, cost is, those are normally pretty cheap. What, like 15 bucks? Uh, barbecue grill, one. We'll say that uh, we'll go with a decently cheap one, 250. Uh, let's see. We need uh, utensils. Peanut okay. butter. Yep, yeah, peanut butter. What else? I, I'll We'll write all the things down, and then we'll come back and do the cost. Yeah. Oh, can I? Yes. You took out the barbecue sauce. Got it. All right. What else? Um, uh, we need uh condiments, which yes. is condiments, which is like what ketchup. You know, you guys know that. Is. So I'll just put condiments. Uh, we need uh paper towels, yeah. ice, a cooler. Mm -hmm. Uh, let's say we need um, like a spatula for flipping it all. Oh, we need burger and hot dog buns. Yeah. We need eggs, hot dogs. Eggs. eggs. Condiment. Uh, uh, eggs. What was the last thing you said? Condiment. Condiment. Mm -hmm. Yep. Got that. Um. Why not throw on some like some like lettuce, tomatoes, tomato. yeah, onions. Oh yes, now we're talking. Now we're getting to the good stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay, bread. Uh, yeah, we got burger bread, burger and hot dog bread. We'll stop there for now. Th this is a good list. Uh, you know, we're not actually doing a barbecue. If we were, we'd have a lot much longer list. Um. Okay, so we got our list here. So utensils, let's say that is, uh, you know, we'll just do one pack of that is 25 bucks at Costco. Paper plates, we will do two packs. That's going to be 15 each. Peanut butter, two packs, 15 each. Barbecue sauce, two packs, 15 each. Condiments, we're going to do three of those. Those are 25 each. Paper towels, just need one for 20. Ice, need a lot of ice. Probably eight packs three of packs. ice. Yeah. And it's maybe what, like a uh, thing like two, two, three bucks, something like that, right? Uh, a cooler might be about 50 bucks. A spatula set, like so you can like flip the burgers and all that. Uh, that's going to be just one set, 15 at the Fred Meyer. Hot dogs and hamburger buns probably need a good. What would you say? Maybe five of each. So probably 10 total. And let's say those are five each. Uh, hot dogs, five packs. And we'll say we got 10 of those. And uh, hold on, five packs. Yeah, 10 each. Yep. Eggs. Um, go eggs by the dozen, right? How many dozen eggs? We'll just do two. Let's say that's uh, 10 bucks each, lettuce, tomato, onion. Let's say we got a big group, so we go with like three of each, and that's going to be like uh, three bucks each. Okay. And so notice, first of all, where did your titles go? 
Like, what is the name of column B and what's the name of column C? They're gone because we went down, right? Because as we moved down the spreadsheet, our titles uh, went away. So there's an easy fix for that. It's called freezing your headers. And to do that, we can just come up here. I'm going to actually get rid of this row here. And let's see. I'm going to go to view and do freeze. And I'm going to say two rows. I'm going to do three rows. Let's see what happens. So I did three rows, but that's too much because you see where this gray line is? So that's always going to stay there. So that was a little bit too much. I'm actually going to insert a row back above, and I'll show you guys what I just did in a little bit. Um, so notice I added a row here. So you can always add a row by clicking on the row over here. So in this case, row two, let's say I wanted to delete this row. I didn't want this empty row here. I can right click on my mouse, right click. I can right click on the two here and I can delete the row. If I wanna add a row above it, I can do the same exact thing, but the opposite, right? So right click on two, but now we wanna insert a row above or below. So I'm gonna do above and it adds a row here, okay? So I'm going to go back to view. I'm going to do no. I'm going to do freeze. Let's see. View freeze. Two rows. Say we want to freeze these three. Okay. So now we have these three frozen. So now as I scroll down, notice that item quantity and cost per unit. Hey, hi, Eric. First three rows. Hey, what's going on, Ellie? Hey, sorry to interrupt. You know, we're having a class today here with yes, uh, sir. a new bunch of people. Can you see that? Oh, yeah. Nice. What yeah. you got? Yeah, you guys can say hi. So there's a lady hey, from Congo. So they, they, they want to learn computer, computer and we want to connect them to some resources as well. Can you see them? Okay. Yeah, hold on. Let me say hi. Yeah. Let's see here. Let me spotlight okay. everyone so I can see everyone. There we go. Wow. Okay. Whole class. Hi, yeah. everyone. Am I on the TV? Wow. Hello. Okay. Hey. Hello. <laughs> Good yeah. to see you guys. Excellent. Okay, great. So, yeah, they came a bit late, but we, we're going to carry on. You guys can carry on on that side. Awesome. Thanks, Ellie. Appreciate it. Y you're welcome. Awesome. So good. Okay. Uh, looks like they're having a good class over at Mission Africa also. All right, let me go back to sharing my screen. And here we go. All right. And so I'm just getting my screens all fixed here. Okay. And so we, we have the first three rows frozen because as we go down, we want to make sure that we can see everything and we don't lose these titles up here. No. Um, no. And so now... I am going to go ahead, let's do some of the math, right? So we need to know how much are we spending on burgers, how much on cheese, because right now we just have how many units of each thing we need. We have the cost per unit, but now we need to have this column do some math for us. Now, of course, if you had a calculator, um, I think someone might be unmuted if you want to uh, go ahead and mute. Yeah, there we go. And so we need to do a little bit of math here. Um, in order to figure out how much are we at, our budget was a thousand, and I don't know where we're at right now. So let's go ahead and do that math. So right here in cell, this this cell here is going to be where we're going to calculate it, and this cell is called D, and then you see it's row four, right? So when I click here, notice that this turns blue, and this turns blue. So that tells me that I am in cell D four. Also. You can see up here in the top left that you're in D4. Anytime you click any cell, it'll always tell you here in the top left corner, this box will tell you where you're at. In this case, G11. It also highlights the column name and the row number. So we're going to go back to D4, and this is where I'm going to go ahead and create a formula, and that formula is going to calculate the cost for burgers, and it's also going to eventually do all of these costs. So let's go ahead and do that. So to do that, 
we can go ahead and click. Let me just find the button. So we can go equals, which tells it that you're making a formula. And then you click on this cell, because we want to do quantity. Hit star 8 to multiply. That's the symbol for multiplication. And then click on the next one. Okay, and then you hit enter. And did you see what it did? It said, oh, the total of five times 125, or five times $25 each is 125 bucks. It also suggested that if I want to use that same formula to calculate the rest of these items, I can just hit check. And so that is a little bit of AI, for those of you who've heard about AI in the news. That's a little bit of artificial intelligence anticipating what we were going to be doing next. And so I went ahead and created a formula for all of the rows. Okay. And so now uh, the couple things we want to do to clean it up a little bit uh, is we want to do some formatting because right now it's a little bit hard to see. Uh, we want to use some bold. We want to make some of the text bigger. Maybe we want to do some underlines, uh, the things that are uh, money or currency. We want to format them to look like currency because right now we just have normal numbers. So let's do a little bit of that now. So up here for barbecue shopping list, normally when you have a title, you want to make it bigger, bolder, stronger. You really want it to jump out of the page, right? And so to do that, let's go ahead and click on barbecue shopping list. We're going to increase the font right here. And the font is just uh, the size, the color of the text, uh, with it, what it looks like. Like, uh, does it look like cursive, or does it look fancy, or does it look like uh, something you would see in a children's book? So that would be the font, and we're going to make it bigger right now. I'm going to make it bold using this B here. And I'm going to actually change the color right here. I want to make it red. And then notice that it's over here to the left. Normally a title, you want it centered over your information. So in this case, I'm going to grab it here, click and hold in A1, and move all the way over to D1. And then I'm going to tell it to merge cells using this function right here. And it's going to merge all of these cells into one cell. So now if I was con to continue typing, it would type all the way across. But it's still off to the left. The last thing we want to do is bring it to the middle using the function here and say center alignment. So alignment is, does the wording start on the far left? Does it center the wording or does it move it over to the right? So if we were to do a right alignment, it would move it to the right, a left alignment, or a center alignment. So we're going to stick with center alignment, OK? So we got our barbecue shopping list. So the next thing we need to do is now we need to make our titles here a little bit bolder. So I'm going to select all of the titles because we want them to look similar. So I'm going to select all of them, and we're going to format all of them at the same time. I'm going to make them bold, and I'm going to change their background color now. So I'm not, I'm not going to change the text color, but I'm going to change the fill color. So that's going to be the color behind the uh, text. So I'm going to click here, and let's go with like a light blue, okay? So we've got a little bit of formatting going on now. Uh, let's see. We can also click over here. So these are all uh, dollars and cost. So to format those, again, we select and move down. So it's a little bit long, so I'm going to zoom out just a little bit so we can see it all at one time. So I'm going to select the first one, click and hold, go all the way down to the bottom, and then over to the right, because cost per unit should be in dollars, and total item cost should be in dollars. And this is a really easy format. I can just come over to here, and this is on your toolbar. So all these buttons here are your toolbar. Uh, if you were at our Google Docs classes, uh, you're aware of the toolbar, and we used it in that class, but just wanted to reintroduce it. So all these buttons here are different things that you can do to your spreadsheet. You can make text bold or italics. You can increase your font right here. Uh, you can make things into currency or percentages. 
You can zoom in, you can format uh, text, you can print, you can undo, you can search for text within the document. There's so much you can do here from the toolbar. And so let's go ahead and make it currency. I'm gonna click here to format as currency. And boom, turns it all into dollars. But there's still one question we don't have the answer to. Are we over budget or not, right? Our budget's a thousand bucks. We've added up some columns now, so we know how much each unit costs, but the final thing we need to do is get the total of all of this added up, right? Because this is our total item cost for each item, burgers, cheese, paper plates, but now we need to add up these to get our total. So to do that, we can just come down here, and using this button here, we can make a function, and a function is nothing more than a formula. So we can click on that and do sum. And it's saying, okay, so you want to sum, which means to add up. And then it's asking me, where are the values that you want to sum? So it's saying sum, open parentheses, and then it's looking for the values. These are the values here, D4 down to D21, right? So these are the values here that I want to sum. So I just click the values and come on down. Once I have them all selected, notice the formula here says sum, open parentheses, D4, the double dot means through D21. So everything from D4 all the way down to D21, I want the sum of that. Hit enter, and there's our calculation. So we're a little bit over budget. So if we were gonna be going to Costco, we would have to make sure that we back out of that a little bit. I see a hand raised. Yes, uh, I want to acknowledge you that we have on the attend list, we have people play twice. Uh, let's see, people that have what? We have listed people played twice on the on the attend list. On the attend list? Yeah, yeah, number six and number 10. The paper plate uh, is repeated. That's what he's saying. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Mm. Good, good call, good call, good call. Uh, let's do. Okay, this one here, right? Number six, number ten, and number fourteen is. Oh, sorry, number six and ten is the same. Good call. So let's go ahead and delete that. So let's say I wanted to delete this one, right? Uh, so. Again, like we did up here to delete a row. And what's nice about this is it'll auto recalculate all the numbers. So again, row 10 is a duplicate of six. So we can simply come here to row 10 over on the left. So not in here, but all the way over where it says 10, right click and it says, what do you wanna do? Insert a row above, below, or do you wanna delete the row? Do you wanna clear the row or do you wanna hide it? So we want to delete the row. And there we go. It's gone and it recalculated. We're at 1,013. So we need to cut off a few more bucks. So let's do, uh, let's see. Let's just do nine things of drinks. And there we go, 998. Now, of course, yes, there's probably gonna be tax and stuff, but we're not gonna do that today. Okay, so for the purposes of training, there's no tax. You got tax-free nonprofit status or something. And so uh, what I wanna do now is I wanna add some more formatting to this. I like to see all these lines that are in between all of this. So when to do that, you can just simply click and highlight everywhere that you want lines in between all of the cells and then come here to borders and click all borders. And notice it makes those stand out a little bit more now, right? We're starting to look like we got a nice spreadsheet and I hope you guys are starting to see how spreadsheets can help you to organize information very well. Um, it gives you the opportunity to see a lot of information in one place. Uh, here we have our barbecue shopping list, all the items we're buying, how much of each item, the cost per unit, um, and then the total cost is 998 bucks. So I'm gonna just highlight this and make this a little bit more bolder. So I'm gonna come here. And I'm going to make that yellow and I'm going to make it bold. 
Okay. Hit go ahead and hit enter. And so here's our total cost. So one thing that we also can do is uh, down here, we're on sheet one. So in Google Sheets, you can have multiple sheets because you might be working on a project, right? You might have, you know, one that has the barbecue shopping list for Memorial Day, but then in another sheet, you might have, oh, the barbecue list for um, the one at my house next week. And that might be in a different sheet. So sometimes you have uh, what they call a book and a book can have multiple sheets. So right now our book only has one sheet. So if I click here, I can add a sheet. Notice that it comes in blank, just like the last one. So I can click now between the two sheets. I can also rename the sheet. To rename it, you can just click this down arrow here and click on it, rename. And there's a couple options, right? You can delete it, you can duplicate it, can copy it to a different place, change colors, et cetera, et cetera. So for now, I'm going to rename this sheet. And this one's going to be called Barbecue Shopping List. And then over here, let's say we had, uh, this would be another shopping list. This might be your personal uh, grocery shopping list. And you would do a similar thing here, right? Now, if you know you're going to do something similar, what you can also do is right-click here, and you can also hit Duplicate. Now, you can't have two tabs or two sheets that are named the same thing. It won't allow that to happen. The computer won't let you do that. So when you make a copy of it, now look, so we have two different copies of the same thing. So I can make this one, rename this one, and call it barbecue shopping list two. Um, excuse me. And then this could be a separate one, but again, we didn't have to start over from the beginning because we know we like this format. Well, so we can just duplicate it and then we can change this one without changing this one. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete this one for now. And I'm going to delete, uh, actually, I'll, I'll leave personal grocery shopping there, so barbecue shopping list. So another thing we want to do is we want to make sure we give this document a name. Currently, it's named Untitled Spreadsheet. So we want to come up here, and we can just click in there and give it a name. So I'm going to call it Barbecue Shopping List. Hit Enter. So this has now been renamed. So this document is called Barbecue Shopping List. And... Does anyone remember how we saved this document and where it's saved to? It's very similar to what we did in Google Docs. Yes. Where is it saved at? On that file. Is this saved on the computer? Is this am I saving this document on my computer or am I saving this somewhere on the cloud? No, you are I saving think, it on the cloud. I think it automatically saves us. So I don't know what you were the last time you said it's saved by itself. No, you're correct. You're correct, Florence. It is it does save by itself. So I want you guys to see and also thank you, uh by by Yuba. Uh you're correct. It is saving on the cloud and it does save automatically. So if I come over here, and let's say I just write some text here. As I write, I want you guys to watch this little cloud with the check in it. I'm just going to type some random text. Okay. Yeah. Did you see what it did? It said saving, and then it said save it's to nice. drive, and then it goes away. So as you are editing your document, it is constantly resaving and saving and saving and saving and saving. Uh, and so you don't have to worry about hitting the save button here like you would if you were in Microsoft Excel or PowerPoint. Um, this document is saving in real time as you're moving around it and organizing it, okay? Uh, so it's saved to the cloud. So let's take a look at that. So I've created my spreadsheet now. Let's go back out to go back to Sheets Home. We always can just click this button, this uh, green icon here. That's always going to be there. So you can just click that. And again, we have the area where we can start a spreadsheet, but now we didn't. We don't want to start a spreadsheet. We now have our spreadsheet created. 
Now we want to go back here and reopen it. So I see where there's a question. How do you save a Google Sheet to a PDF? Uh, great question. I'll cover that in just a second. Uh, thank you for that question, Margaret. Uh, barbecue shopping list. So I'm going to open it back up right here. Notice it says it was saved at 643 just a few minutes ago. So I just click it one more time. It opens right back up. And then I can go around and I can do it, what I need to do. But in this case, uh, we're pretty much done with this one. I do want to show you that if you did not want the extra zeros at the end, you could highlight these. And up here, you can move the decimal. You can increase the decimal where it has the extra zeros. If you're working on something where you need to be really precise, you can have all those decimal places. If you just need integers without the extra zeros after the decimal place, you can also do this. And now we just see whole dollar values. Okay, so that's really a preference up to you how you want to do that. I want to make it look like normal currency and just leave it here. And then we are good to go. So I'm going to go ahead all the way out now. I want to show you how to find your document all the way from the beginning. So again, from your Gmail or from your Google, whichever one you sign into, uh, you can click on Google Apps over here. Go to Sheets. Once in Sheets, we can, of course, start, or we can just find new ones right here, right? So barbecue shopping list. And then Margaret had asked a question on how do you save this to a PDF? That's a great question. Uh, so if we come over here to File, and this, by the way, is the menu. So there's a lot of functions and different things you can do to your spreadsheet up here. You can insert all kinds of fun stuff here. Uh, you can do charts and pivot tables. You can add images and drawings and links. Uh, you can, you know, look at different views. But here under File, we can go here to Download. And we can download it to a PDF. So let's go ahead and do that. The current sheet. So, again, if you had multiple sheets, you would want to look at this and say, are you downloading the current sheet or are you downloading the entire workbook, which could have multiple sheets? So we're just going to do current sheet. Paper size is normal, 8.5 by 11. Uh, landscape or portrait. Portrait is when your piece of paper is longer up and down than it is wide. And then landscape is when your piece of paper is wider than it is long up and down. So in this case, we're going to go with portrait. And then I would hit export. When I hit export, notice that it downloads up here. It says barbecue shopping list PDF. And then I can just click on that. And there is your PDF. Looks really nice. Does anybody have any questions about that? So to save, we went to file, then from file, we went to download. Okay, to, to, download. to save, yeah, to save it in a different format. It's always saving to your Google Drive, okay? okay. Um, so the document is there, but sometimes maybe you want to send this as a PDF. What's the benefit of a PDF? People can't change it, right? So when you send your resume, normally you send it as a PDF because you don't want anyone to edit it and change it and move it around. In this case, if you wanted to send this as a PDF, or even if you wanted to download it to Microsoft Excel for some reason, you wanted to move it around in uh, Excel, you could click here, you would download it into Microsoft Excel. Uh, so yeah, I just clicked on PDF. It asked me a couple of questions here on the right, like how you know big of the piece of paper do you want it to be? Do you want it to be landscape or portrait? And then you just simply hit export. And then it brings it up here, and you can open it and see that this is your PDF. I could also go to Downloads from my File Explorer and see that I have the barbecue list downloaded today. You can open it up from there, too. Does that make sense to everyone? Any questions on that? Margaret, I know you asked that question. Did that answer your question? Yes, you did. Thank you. 
You're welcome. Great question, by the way. Yeah, PDFs are pretty standard, right? Uh, especially when you're emailing them and sharing it with different people. Um, so let's see what else we can look at. A question, please. Yes, sir. Yes, how do you get or add the total item cost? Total item cost here. Okay. So no, not down, not down, not down. Oh, I mean from what, the which, quantity, uh -huh, from the cost. So how do you get a total item cost? Oh, this one yes. here. Okay. Mm -hmm. How yes, do you get it? Is, yes. I'm gonna delete it. Delete. And delete this one too. Okay. So to get that, uh, we can just write a simple formula. So anytime you want a spreadsheet to make a formula for you, uh, you have to start with an equal sign. That is telling the computer that what you're about to do is create a formula. So where is the where are the cells that we want to multiply? Right? B4, this one, and C4, right? We want to do 5 times 25 and get the total cost here, correct? Where are those two cells, B4 and C4? So here, we're going to do equals B4. Then I'm going to hit the shift 8. That is the symbol to multiply when you're writing a formula. And then I'm going to click C4. So we're doing equals B4 multiplied times C4. B4 being the quantity, C4 being the cost per unit. And then you hit enter. But again, the key was to start with that equal sign because that's what's telling the computer that you're creating a formula. So we hit enter and then it gives you the cost. Okay. Now here, what's happening is this is a AI generated suggestion. It, it understands like, oh, okay, you put a formula here to calculate it. You probably want to do the same thing here. So this is a suggested autofill, which is a, you know, AI generated thing. It's great. It looks like it's pretty much right. I don't have anything to add. So I can hit yes, and it'll autofill all of this. Or I can reject it, and then I can do it myself. Equals quantity of cheese times five times the cost per unit, and hit enter. Now, another thing I can do, because yes, I do want that same formula here, right? It's the same formula, essentially. We just want to multiply across each time, right? So if, if I have the formula correct here, and I want to apply that same formula in all these cells, you can also just click here, and you see that blue little button in the bottom right corner of that uh, cell. I can click that and just hold and bring it down, release it right there, and it will create that formula in each one of these cells. Because it knows it's just using that same formula and applying it to each one of these rows. Right, so now if I click in each one of these rows, for instance, this one here for the cooler, well, let's do this one. So, for instance, this one for ice, we did quantity eight, three dollars per uh, bag, for twenty-four bucks. So you can see the formula right here in the formula bar. So cell D14 has a formula, and we know that because it starts with the equals. And then it says B14 times C14. What is this? This is B14 multiplied times C14 equals twenty-four. Thank you so much. You're welcome. The key is using that equal sign, right? If you want to do division, um, it's just a, a little dash sign. So you would do equals. Let's say you wanted to do, you know, total cost divided by uh, cost per unit, right? It, it'll do that math also, okay? Um, so similar formula, but instead of using the multiply sign, you would use the division sign. You can also use the minus sign and the plus sign just like you would if you were doing normal math, right? And so those are all symbols that it will recognize as long as you start your formula with that equal sign. 